nope, you guys did not read the title wrong. Nope, I did not misspell anything in the title. I literally bought every single DVD at this garage sale. There were hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands. I honestly didn't count. Just tons of DVDs, and I bought every single one. I'm probably one of the craziest resellers to, to actually do that, but I did it, and it was a lot. It was definitely an experience, a lot of work, but stick around to the end. You guys are going to see a full breakdown of how, how much money I've already made off those DVDs, how much more potential profit I can still make off those DVDs, and whether it's worth it, whether I do it again, who knows? Make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video to find out. But we're gonna jump right into the garage sale footage. You guys are not gonna see um, where I bought all the DVDs because I actually came back later to the garage sale a second time and that's when I bought all the DVDs. Um, I did not have my camera. So you guys are gonna see me pick out a few DVDs here and there, but you guys are gonna see the massive amount of DVDs that they had at this garage sale. So let's get into it. I don't know if you guys can read that sign very well there, but all CDs, DVDs, and vinyl records were five for a dollar. Blu-rays were also five for a dollar. I did look at the CDs and the vinyl records, and I didn't see anything great there, so I didn't get any of those. Well, feel free to look. <laughs> That's a lot of good. Which one? Did you watch all these? No. <laughs> no, uh, my son bought a house and uh, the guy, once he got the money, he just left them all, so. Okay. Uh, That's a lot. Yeah. A lot of movies, records, CDs. Initially, I just wanted to go through them all and see what they had and see pick out just a few that I wanted to buy, which I did do in the beginning. But like I said, I ended up coming back to this garage sale and buying all of the DVDs. Um, something that I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention later on in this video is that the big reason, one of the big reasons why I decided to buy all the DVDs was because there were a lot of... Um, DVDs I didn't recognize, a lot of Blu-rays I didn't recognize, and that could mean pretty big value a lot of the time. And there was also a lot of TV series which do really well for me as well. How late are you open today? After three. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think I'm ready. Eight. So, if you get a 
I put more in my bank account. Even money. I'm uh, making even six, right? Six dollars. Yeah. yeah. Six dollars. Uh, let me see. Okay. Open. So I got two more. So that's six. And then I grab these as well. So that's seven. So that's another five. Yeah, seven dollars. Alright. Okay. Thank you. And I might swing back by tomorrow, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm already I'm already late for work. <laughs> but thank you. Alright guys, here is all the DVDs I bought at the garage sale. I'm sorry I didn't have it on camera. Um, I went back to that garage sale after I got off work because I had to leave pretty fast from that garage sale. I got a few DVDs while I was there, but then I came back and I decided to just said, screw it, I'm just going to buy them all, see what they wanted. And I only paid $60 for all these DVDs, guys. Boxes, boxes of DVDs. Extra large Lowe's size boxes. It's just insane how much. I haven't gone through these. These I have gone through, these ones. If they're at least worth $5 plus shipping, I'm saving them and going to list them. And if they're not, then I'm putting them in totes and boxes and they're going to go back to the thrift store or I might list them locally, try to sell them that way. But I've only gone through one box so far, which is in the other room. I'll show you guys that in a minute. But I've already... Pretty confident that I made my money back plus some on just one box. So I am pretty happy. I got to go through all these yet. There's Nuka. You'll like never see her. Or Nilla. Yeah, their cat toys are strung all over, guys. Sorry about that. They, they don't really like people. Nilla likes people. Nuka's, she's very independent. She doesn't like a lot of people. But yep, just boxes, guys. Got totes, bags over there. And I'll show you the DVDs in the other room as well. There's another box hiding behind there. It's just crazy. Hundreds. Hundreds of DVDs. 60 bucks for all of them. Alright, here's the rest of the DVDs here, guys. So these ones in this tote are ones that are worth listing individually. Those I'm, I'm keeping. Uh, I got some down there uh, that I might lot up together that are like the same type. Like... Uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy, so like Marvel, DC type of things. I got box sets up here that I'm putting out for now just to see if I can match up other box sets. This box is the one I'm working on right now, about halfway done with it. And that box over there are ones that are not worth um, listing individually. So it's just crazy. Tons and tons of DVDs. And not one box not not one of these boxes from what i could tell when i was back boxing it up not one of these dvds is the mike myers smash hit cat in the hat not one <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> but we just realized we didn't have that movie we've been looking for cat in the hat not for too long but we wanted to watch it the other day, and we realized we didn't have it. So, we realized we didn't have it. I went over to my wall of DVDs, and I have them all alphabetized. I'm kind of a big movie person. I love movies. And I have them all alphabetized, and it wasn't there. We don't have it. And it's not for free anywhere, like Netflix, Hulu, anything like that. So, I kind of see that as a challenge. Yeah, I could buy it for, like, what, five bucks, probably, on eBay or whatnot. But what's the fun in that? So that's my new challenge. I'm going to be looking for that at garage sales and thrift stores. So that'll be fun. All right, guys. <laughs> I am done with all the DVDs and Blu-rays, finally. It took several months. That garage sale that you guys saw was back in December of last year, 2022. Yay for Florida, year-round garage sales. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it took a while. Um, the main reason that it took so long was because a few of them, not as many as I thought there would be, but um, there are a few that needed repair and need disc doctored. Um, and I usually wait until I have a decent stack to repair them because it's kind of a process. You kind of get in the motion of doing it. So I like to wait until there's a decent amount of them. Um, so that's honestly why this video took so long. Um, I went through the DVDs and Blu-rays 
pretty fast and they're pretty uh, easy to list so that did not take um, as long as you may think because there's just scan go scan go scan go and if they weren't worth four dollars or more plus shipping I got rid of them so I was just waiting to when I actually finally repaired them um, and listed them and then I was able to crunch numbers for you guys and break it all down for you um, so let's get into it so the DVDs and blu-rays I have already sold Gr the gross amount is one thousand one hundred forty dollars and sixty five cents hopefully you guys can see it there if not I'll also put it bigger up here as well for you guys to see it because I think I kind of write small but um and that is gross guys that is not net so we have to subtract our cost of goods and it cost us sixty seven dollars because remember I paid sixty dollars for all of the DVDs and blu-rays but in the beginning I only bought a few um, I didn't have time um, to go through all of them so I only bought a few and I ended up coming back later that day without my camera and bought them all so that's why it was off camera um, but the ones that I bought in the beginning were seven dollars so I ended up paying sixty seven dollars for all of those um, and then you got to account the fees um, which fees are usually a little higher for media so when I calculated out it was about hundred and ninety seven dollars but I'm just gonna round that up to 200 make things a little easier um, so subtracting oh and I forgot I had it written down and I already forgot and then I got to subtract as I'm dropping my eraser um, and then I have to subtract the supplies the bubble mailers that I use now a few of them were bigger box sets so I put them in boxes to ship but in my boxes I get for free so I don't have to count those but I'm just gonna count each one as a bubble mailer just to make things a little easier and account for any extra um, expenses that I might um, have missed but I don't think I missed any so so calculating that out is $31.72 because there's 122 things that I have sold of the DVDs and blu-rays times about 26 cents a piece for the bubble mailers that I had bought at the time um, comes up to $31.72. Now, yes, there's only 122 things because I got rid of most of the DVDs and Blu-rays because most of them weren't worth keeping, which is what I expected. Um, I only kept a little over one of those big boxes full of DVDs, probably about, oh, maybe almost two boxes, about a box and a half of those uh, DVDs I ended up actually keeping. So it was 122 sold, about $31.72 um, in supplies that it cost. And that leaves me with $841.93. So that is pretty good so far. And I still have a lot that I have not sold yet, which I've broken that down for you guys as well. So when I broke it down, the potential gross sales uh, for what I have remaining is $715.93. I just wrote our other net profit up there just to, to keep track of it, to remind myself. And again, we have to subtract fees and the cost of supplies i don't have to subtract cost of goods because i did that for the initial one and we're our, so the, all of this that we have left is is pure profit subtracting the fees is about 125 i think it was 123 when i calculated out but we're gonna say 125 round it up a little bit and then the bubble mailers are about 1872 and that brings our potential net profit for what we have left is 572 dollars and 21 cents and if we add that to the net profit we already have, we get $1,414.14. Lots of ones and fours. <laughs> but yeah, and that, that's incredible. That's all net profit. Um, there, there would be a little bit of supplies used when we repaired the disc machine. Um, honestly, it probably the, the supplies that we use, it's like a cream in the machine and stuff. I mean, it wouldn't be more than like ten dollars in supply. That's that's gracious. It should not be more. Th it should not be that much that we use because it's only a few drops of the solution. The solution is kind of expensive, but you get a decent size, decent size bottle of it. So and I usually use a few drops at a time for each one. Um, so I mean, that might be like ten dollars in the supplies that we use, the cream that they use for that. So um, still. $1,400 in net profit or potential net profit. We've already made $841.93 in net profit. That is just awesome because 
I'm trying to think, even if I say that we did 24 hours in work, I feel like that's, I feel like that's excessive. It did not take me that long to go through all the DVDs. It was scan and go. Um, it maybe took like an hour to repair all the DVDs that were for this lot specifically. Um, and then listing them is fairly quick. Listing DVDs is really quick. Shipping DVDs are really quick. So honestly, I would say it'd probably be a little less than 20 hours, but let's just say 24 hours that we have into all this. Um, and if we divide, divide that by 24, the 1400 that's almost $60 an hour it comes out let me see yeah so that number divided by 24 comes out to 58.92 rounded so almost $60 an hour I take those numbers for sure because all that stuff's already listed so it's just gonna be passive income now at that point passive profit now that I was also between my husband and I that I was counting both because my husband is actually the one who repaired the DVDs um, and it took him about for that stack specifically for this uh for this lot that i purchased um it probably took him about an hour maybe to repair them all um so yeah so that's also counting his time as well um so yeah 50 i'd say 50 to 60 bucks an hour is, is what it averages out to and i like that that's pretty good that's pre that's a pretty good rate for me i like that i like media I love selling DVDs and Blu-rays. Now this begs the question, would I do it again? It's hard to say no with over $1,000 in profit. Well, potential profit. Right now I have $800, $841.93 right now in profit. But it's going to be, even if I accept lower offers, because I do have, I do accept best offers. So even if I do accept a few best offers here and there, it's still going to be over $1,000 in profit because it's $1,400 right now in potential profit. So the offers aren't going to be that low to to take away $400. So it's going to be over a thousand dollars in profit. And it's hard to say no, that I wouldn't do it again <laughs> for, for that kind of money. Um, it really wasn't too hard. It did take up space for a little bit. And that's the main reason why I'm unsure. Um, would I do it again down the road? For sure. A hundred percent. If I had the space, I would do this again. And if the price is right, like how it was at this garage sale, but right now, Honestly, I probably would say no. I probably wouldn't do it again just because right now I have just an excess amount of inventory. I just have so much stuff right now. I don't have the room like I did back in December. Um, because, you know, garage sales pick up in December, January for Florida. And so I got a lot of inventory after that. And I just keep getting more and more inventory in the, in the winter and in the spring. Um, and I still have excessive inventory as well, so I don't have as much space as I did when I first bought those DVDs. So right now, I probably wouldn't, um, but if I had the space, 100%, 100% I would do this again. Um, and if only I had the, uh, Disc Doctor machine that I use, it's a JFJ, uh, Easy Pro, I think is what it's called. Um, I wouldn't have bought all the DVDs if I didn't have that machine, because I wasn't about to go through and check every single disc at that garage sale. Um, but since I had that machine, I was like, well, if the DVD is scratched, I can fix it. So, um, that's another factor that played into making this de decision to buy them all, um, as well as the price. Like if I went to a garage sale, they had that many DVDs, but they were priced all at $2 or even a dollar. I honestly, I wouldn't even have asked to buy them all because it would probably, the price would probably be too high for me to make any money on, but her price was right five for a dollar less than less than 25 cents a piece you know 20 cents a piece for each dvd or blu-ray um that's why i was more confident asking them how much they would do for all the dvds and blu-rays um because i feel like i would get a decent price because their dvds and blu-rays were already very cheap so just a lot of different factors that would play into whether i would do this again if i had the space yes if the price was right you know if they were five or four for a dollar like they were before yes i would um if they would cut me a deal like they did this time and as long as i had my my disc repair machine that that i use um those those three main factors are what plays into into me making this decision and in the end um like i said i cannot complain i've made lots of money and um it was, it was really fun it's a really fun experience i like uh i like doing that i learned about a lot of different dvds um, that I didn't know in the past to look out for. Um, and that's always good as well. 
But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something from this. I don't know if you did. I mean, I wouldn't... Like I said, I wouldn't suggest you guys to go out and buy it unless the price is right. You guys have space. You guys have a means to repair discs. Um, oh. It's just a lot of different factors that you have to consider before making a... Bit, well, not a big money purchase, but big space purchase like that. Um, <laughs> and it is, it is time consuming. It's not something that's going to take, you know, a few seconds to, to clean up and list. It's going to take a while. So, um, but it's definitely something that y'all should look into if you guys have the space and have the means to repair the discs. Because um, there's definitely a lot of money in DVDs. There's so much money in media, guys. Don't, don't, look, don't overlook DVDs. Don't overlook CDs. It's definitely worth it to try to learn about it and, and look into it because it's definitely a niche that not very many people or resellers know about and are into and usually they, you can buy them really cheap at garage sales. So I did love it. I love selling DVDs and CDs and things like that. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, found this interesting um, and want to see more content like this, this is my first kind of video where I've actually broken it down. Um, usually it's just strictly like garage sale footage and not me really breaking down like how much money I made and things like that. Um, so if you guys like garage sale footage, things like that, make sure you definitely hit subscribe. Um, I post a video right now. I'm doing two a week on Tuesdays and Fridays is when I am releasing videos pretty consistently for the, the last couple weeks. Now I've been doing Tuesdays and Fridays. So if you guys want to join us, join us here, the crazy the crazy reselling picking people we'd love it me and my other subscribers would love to have you guys here join in the fun learn some stuff we have a great time <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching i love you guys i appreciate you guys and i'll see you soon